Kevin Camps from Beyond Nuclear drops by to talk about nukes on the moon. Check it out, leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Deep dive into uh, nuclear power, nuclear waste, nuclear weapons, all things nuclear, uh, with one of, the, uh, one of the experts who I have tremendous respect for, Kevin Camps. He's the nuclear waste specialist over at beyondnuclear.org, and, uh, and, and the Twitter handle, of course, beyond, at Beyond Nuclear. And Kevin, uh, welcome back to the program. I, I, I heard, first of all, that NASA is working on space-based nuclear power. Do I have this right? Yes, they just put out a document. It's kind of hopefully Trump's last hurrah on the subject before leaving office. But um, talk of lunar-based uh, nuclear reactors for electricity, and certainly with the Space Force, uh, a lot of talk about nuclear um, powered weaponry in space. So, yeah, it's something that's been talked about for decades, and there are very few people following it. There are some great groups uh, like the Global Alliance to Keep Space for Peace, and our board of directors member, Carl Grossman, who's an investigative journalist, is on that board as well. And he's one of the few investigative journalists who has tracked this now for decades. So what baffles me about this, Kevin, is that the sun is not impeded by clouds in outer space. I mean, I suppose if you get on the dark side of the moon, you got a problem. But by and large, there's a hell of a lot of sunlight out there, um, which you would think could power pretty much everything. I mean, aren't virtually all the satellites, and there's hundreds, maybe thousands of them going over our heads right now, aren't virtually all of them powered by the sun? Yeah, there's tremendous solar potential for space propulsion, and it just, you know, gets to the heart of the matter. I mean, a lot of what's being discussed about lunar exploration or colonization, but also Martian, you know, has a militaristic uh, side to it. And so mm -hmm. nuclear would be very concentrated power. Yeah, that's true. Uh, you could power weapon systems with it if you wanted to. And unfortunately, that seems to be what the U.S. military industrial complex is interested in. It's not about exploration per se, um, it's about dominance. They use that kind of language. And, sure. you know, there was a space probe uh, called Cassini that was quite infamous, and it had a radio thermal electric generator on it, which was powered by plutonium-238. And as Carl Grossman in his writing showed, that deep space, deep solar system probe could have been powered by solar, but instead we're using some of the most hazardous uh, compounds humans have ever generated and polluting our solar system with them because that is flung out there. It's, of course, never going to be brought back or cleaned up. Wow. Wow. And, and it seems like there's even a danger in launching something like that. I mean, what if the launch blows up? Yeah, that was an amazing revelation that Carl got the scoop on back when Cassini was launched. The NASA safety officer who prepared the environmental impact statement said that, you know, if there was a rocket explosion on takeoff, like happened with the Challenger, or if during the Earth swing by, they use the Earth as like a catapult to propel the probe further into space, it came very close to Earth and luckily didn't reenter the atmosphere because it had some 70 pounds of plutonium on board. And uh, that could have uh, been a hazard for 5 billion humans was the main point. If that um, plutonium had vaporized in the Earth's atmosphere. And that NASA safety officer actually resigned from the project because NASA was going forward despite the risks to 5 billion human beings.